it's uh, tiny changes, remarkable results. Okay, so this is gonna be a fun little thing here. Uh, you guys remember this, the one thing? So if you remember just one thing from this as you leave today, remember that you don't rise to the level of your motivation or goals. No, you rise to the level of your systems. Okay, and I'll unpack this and do this. It seems counterintuitive, but sometimes goals are kind of get us in trouble if we rely on them too much, okay? Um, the other thing is here, I think when most people talk about they lack motivation, I think they actually lack clarity. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that, okay? The end result is people basically frustrated about not getting what they want. And again, I think it's from a lack of clarity. So when you understand these three things, the, the power of systems, the most powerful force in the universe, which you know Warren Buffett and Albert Einstein called compound interest, there's a, a calming effect. So like I have average IQ or below average IQ, but I get above average results because of all the things I'm about to share with you, okay? So next up, I'm gonna go through some tiny changes that are gonna get you remarkable results. So anybody watch cycling, Tour de France or anything? Okay, there you go. So the British cycling team, they at one time were the laughing stock of the cycling world. They were so bad that when they ordered new bikes, the company said, uh, please don't mention you bought our bikes. Because <laughs> they thought it was actually gonna hurt them. And then they got this new coach and he had this novel idea. He said, we're gonna get 1% better each day. And he did all the things you would think, like EKG monitors, 1% lighter bikes, 1% lighter tires. Then he started experimenting with other stuff. Let's experiment with pillows. What gets our riders 1% uh, better sleep? Let's experiment with like our soap. Well, it, maybe it aggravates us 1% lower. All these 1% things. And basically he said, look, trust me, we're gonna go from the laughing stock to winning the Tour de France in five years. He was wrong. They won it in two years. Oh. Two years. So he knew. And this is what it is right here. Most powerful force in the universe, Warren Buffett. You get 1% better over a year, that's 37 times better. If you double, it's not even 70, it compounds. It's probably like triple or quadruple, okay? Changing habits are hard for two reasons. You're either trying to change the wrong thing or going about changing the things in the wrong way. I'll unpack this, okay? So this is, this is a kind of mind screw here. This is what this coach knew. He knew the, the plateau of, Latin, uh, of latent potential. So if you can't see this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw this. Two lines, we got results here, we got time here. We start a workout program. We think this is gonna happen. Right? But what actually happens is this. This is what actually happens. This is what he knew. Here's the interesting part. This gap between what you think will happen, what will actually happen, we call this the valley of disappointment. You guys ever feel the valley of disappointment, mm -hmm. right? I think it's because there's a lack of clarity and I'll further unpack this. I know this is gonna happen. I know that at the beginning, I'm building up momentum and it shoots up, okay? So again, I'll unpack this, but know this is what actually happens, right? And this is what he knew when he was doing these 1% improvements where people were laughing at him. He was like, all right, world's most powerful force in the universe. Know that this valley of disappointment is going to happen. But if you know what's gonna happen, you're not gonna to be too stressed out about it. Here's the other thing I think people are changing in the wrong way. We need to go from outcome dependent to identity process, identity. Here's a question, who am I? Outcome versus identity, this major one. So if I offer two people here a cigarette, person one says, no thanks, I'm trying to quit. Outcome. The second person says, no thanks, I'm not a smoker. Identity. 
I've coached 14 years. I'm on my 14th year. I've never not once met somebody who outperformed their identity. Never not once. Maybe they got the goal, but then they revert back to the identity, right? So 90% of the people that win the lotto go bankrupt. They're putting the windfall of money on a bankrupt identity, okay? So this is the big thing right here. These are the three layers of behavior change. Inner area is identity. Then it comes process, then it's outcomes. Most people are doing the complete opposite. They're focusing on outcomes, but their identity is still, I can't lose weight. I'm not a morning person. It's too hard for me, right? So ask yourself these questions. There's a, a page, the front page, and we're gonna go through this really quick. Who is the type of person that could achieve the outcomes we want? Who's the type of person that loses 20 pounds and keeps it off? You know who that is? It's somebody who doesn't miss workouts. If they can't make it to the gym, they do 10 push-ups, 10 squats, they do a walk. And each time they do this thing, if you're outcome-based, you have the idea, oh, it's just 10 push-ups, it doesn't matter. To somebody who has that identity, they're doing 1% reinforcements to their pillars, okay? So spend like a minute, there's on this page. So here's the thing I, I learned from uh, one of my mentors. If you just passively watch, you retain like 10%. When you actively engage, it goes up to 30 to 70. So spend about a minute on the first page. It asks you the question, who is the type of person that could achieve the outcomes we want? Does that make sense? And I encourage you to do this. And so does anybody have a goal here? Right? You don't have to share it, just write something down. Who's the type of person that would get that results? Super important. You don't, want to, you don't want to run a marathon, you want to become a runner. You don't want to write a book, you want to be a writer. All right? spend, a few, spend a minute. I know some of you are not doing it, but I encourage you to do this. This is huge. Yeah? Was that? It is. It's on the other side. Yeah, on the other side. Spend about a minute. And you don't have to do it complete. Maybe you bookmark it for later. Think about this. In 14 years of coaching, I've never once met somebody who outperformed their identity. They may outperform it for a little. They get the goal. But the goal gets you temporary results. About 30 more seconds. Got it? I want you to think about the person who wins the lottery and goes bankrupt. They got money on a poor mindset, and so they go bankrupt again. And this is what happens in health and fitness. You get a goal, but you're putting it on a bankrupt mentality. I can't lose weight. That's just not me. What story are you telling yourself? Cool, about 10 more seconds and you can finish later too. Cool, so um, who is the type of person that can achieve the outcomes you want? So this is, I, I would encourage you to think about this every day. Each and every day you're, you're casting a ballot, you're casting a vote. You're casting a vote for the type of person you wanna be. And when you cast that vote, whether it's like 10 push-ups, walk around the block, you're casting a vote for the person you want to be. And you know what? You're making time your ally, right? This is what the British cycling guy did. But if you cast a vote for the person you don't want to be, time becomes your enemy, right? And here's the thing. We got elections coming up. Nobody wins an election in a landslide. No one gets 100% of the votes. You just got to cast more votes for the person you want to be. So if you think like, Doing 10 push-ups is nothing. Well, you just cast a vote for the person you don't want to be. Time is now your enemy. So think about this. Hopefully, uh, those little things you think are not going to make a difference, you're actually casting a vote. Does that make sense? Make time your ally. So again, most people think they lack motivation when I think it's actually a lack of clarity. Anybody fly a plane before? Anybody in a plane before? Yeah? Okay. 2019. So... 
I would encourage you to switch your focus from your current results to your current trajectory. This is what the British cycling, I'll, I'll unpack it. This is what he knew that nobody knew when everyone was laughing at him. He was just like, mm, give, me, give me a few years. So trajectory, where you're going. This is so important. So these, this is the impact created by a barely noticeable change. And this happens every single day with people. So if you take off from LA, what a final destination of New York. And if the pilot changes the nose three and a half degrees south, you can't even notice it. You'll end up in Washington, D.C. instead of New York. And this is what happens every day with people. This is why I'm so calm under pressure, because I know, I know my trajectory. I know this. I know this is coming. What's your trajectory? So a lot of people will start, I get this, I want results now, I want results now. Hey man, you ever fly a plane? We all wanna get there right away. What's your trajectory? And they're gonna have a valley of disappointment. You're gonna have times where your neck is hurting, the kid's crying behind you, the bathroom has a long line. It's okay, relax, look at the trajectory, okay? It's kind of like throwing a tantrum on a plane saying, I want to be there right now. We all do, right? So think about the trajectory. This is the mind screw because these small things that are not even noticeable, think about this airplane. What's your trajectory instead of your current results? This is what progress actually looks like. I want you to picture, if you will, these two ice cubes in a, in a cold room and it's 25 degrees. And I raise the temperature to 26 nothing happens. I raise it to 27, nothing happens. I raise it to 28, nothing happens. 29, Jesus. 30, nothing. 31, nothing. All right, 32, it starts melting. This is what progress looks like. And it's my belief, complaining about not getting results when you're working your ass off is like complaining about the ice not melting when you went from 25 to 31 degrees. Your work was not wasted, it was just being stored. This is how I'm so extraordinarily calm under pressure. Because I know I have clarity. I'm not wasting time, I'm storing the temperature for that critical mass. This is what the British cycling guy knew. He was like, you guys keep laughing, like, and they they dominated, they, I mean, they dominated. Right? They won, like, I think, like 70%, 80% of the like, world championships because he knew he was not wasting things. He was having things being stored. This, is a, this was actually a big breakthrough for me, actually, a few years ago. The purpose of a goal, check on time, purpose of a goal is to win the game. The purpose of building a system is to continue to play the game. I'll give an example. Some people will get a goal, say they lose 20 pounds. They get the goal, they won the game. They don't have a system to continue to play the game and then they yo-yo back. Remember that one thing I asked you to remember? You don't rise to the level of your goals or your motivation. You rise to the level of your systems. Does that make sense? So instead of wanting to run a marathon, that's good. How about become a runner? Instead of wanting to lose weight, become a fit person. Does that make sense? And having systems in place. What's cool is now I'm going to give you some, some system building. And what's cool, every single one of these are customizable to your own life. It's, that's the coolest thing about this. There's four laws of behavior change. This is where you're going to like engage here, right? Four laws of behavior change. Look, I'm somebody with below average IQ. I got D's and F's all my life. I have above average results because I build systems. I don't rely on willpower. Here are the four laws of behavior change. If you want to make a habit, law number one, write it down, is make it obvious. Make it obvious. This is all about environmental design. So if you're having trouble flossing your teeth, make it obvious. Put the floss next to the light switch or next to your toothbrush. Make it obvious. You're tired of buying these apples and having them go brown in the bottom of the refrigerator? Buy one of these see-through ones, put it smack down in the middle of um, your counter. Make it obvious. Environmental design is super important. Law number two, please write it down, make it attractive. 
at all times, I'm thinking of ways how I can outsource my willpower and motivation. So a good thing to do, because mind screws, when you do something healthy, it's, it's like you're not getting that dopamine spike. You're not, right? So a commitment device, I use this all the time. I have three coaches. I have 10 people in my mastermind group. We do this all the time with each other. A commitment device, you're out with your friends at dinner. What happens to the food that's on your plate? You find ways to eat it. A commitment device is some, an action you take in the present that gets you results in the future. So you can request, hey, no, excuse me, is, is it okay if you put half my food in a to-go bag, and then I'll get it when I leave? It's a commitment device. Don't use willpower, don't use motivation, use systems, that's the higher level thinking, right? Another thing, finding it hard to get to the gym in the morning, call your friend, text your friend, uh, say, We're, hey, let's meet tomorrow at fill in blank time. So when you're in that cold, 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 warm bed, uh, if you don't show up, you're going to feel like a jerk because you got someone depending on you. That's a commitment device, All right? So think about some ways you can have a commitment device. This, the power of habit stacking, I think this actually uh, upped everything in my life for me. So this is probably for me the most powerful thing I've ever done in the past few years. So the power of habit stacking, it's at the bottom of your sheet. And see, this is what most people are like. This is the car. I don't feel like it. No motivation. Ugh. What's cool about habits is every one of you are running them every single day. And habit stacking is, for example, I have a current habit and I'm going to attach a habit I want, right? So on the bottom it says, right, when I drink coffee, if you're a coffee drinker, you know you're going to drink coffee no matter what, right? When I drink coffee, then I say a word of gratitude. You're hitching it on. Does that make sense? So one of the things I do, I own a gym, I founded a gym, I will work out on my deathbed. It's just, I use no motivation. So what do I do? I, I'm learning Russian. I do Russian the same time I work out. So I've like gamed the system. Now I'm guaranteed five hours of Russian. Because you know what? There's something each and every one of you do that takes zero motivation. There's a habit you have that you're gonna do without motivation. You can attach a habit you want. Does that make sense? So kind of take a minute. You'll see at the bottom is an example. What's a habit? Somebody else said yesterday, hey, when I play with the kids, I'm gonna stretch. What's something you do every day that you can stack and attach a habit to? This is like a game changer for me. Like I, I do uh, five, six, seven hours of rush in a week and I was finding it difficult to, to maintain it. It's, I take no energy to work out. I attached it. Does that make sense? Take about 30 seconds. Another thing you could do is if there's something you really, really enjoy on the front end, you'll see to unlock that thing, you start with a habit you need to get to the habit you want or do current habit. So for example, to unlock my workouts, I have to spend 15 minutes on a, a difficult project. So in order to get the current habit I have, I've built a system. I have to unlock it by doing 15 minutes of this project. At the bottom it says, when I say something of gratitude, then I can check Facebook. It's not a lack of motivation people have, it's actually a lack of clarity. You need to tell your brain where these habits need to live. Because if you use motivation, you're not telling your habits where to live. They're homeless, okay? So spend about 30 seconds, uh, a few ideas where you can habit stack. Does that make sense? Current habit, attach a habit you want, and then the habit you need unlocks a habit you currently do. If you're depending on motivation too much, that means you don't have a system in place. Give your brain clarity. Cool and nice. So law number three of four, make it easy. Make it easy. Two minute rule, I've been meditating for about seven years straight. I started with the two minute rule. Here's the key, establish then improve. Establish then improve. Professionals show up. 
professional show up. So most people think everything's got to, the stars got to be perfectly in alignment. Look, here's, you got to scale it down as much as possible. If you want to start running, just put on your freaking tennis shoes and that's it. And then next thing, put on your tennis shoes, walk outside professionals show up. You got to establish and improve. Next thing, put on your tennis shoes, walk to the end of the corner, say hi to a neighbor. Next thing, walk around the corner. You're mastering the art of showing up. You got to, this is how habits work. You establish, then improve. Next thing you know, maybe you jog around the corner and it started by scaling down. So if you're having issues doing something, scale it down. You want to read a book? Just put it on your table, scale it down. Next step, just open the book. I, I, I do this with everything. I'll literally open the book, all right, next day, one page, and it goes, I'm, I'm mastering showing up, then it improves. Scale it down to its easy part so you can show up. Um, so here's the thing, no single instance is going to transform your life. We need to increase the amount of steps or friction to bad stuff and decrease the amount of friction or steps to good stuff. Here's law number four. Here's the mind screw, right? Because you do something, say you do a healthy whatever, you don't get immediate feedback. And you're like, I need that, I need that dopamine spike, right? I need progress. And again, if you're saying that, it's from a lack of clarity, not from a lack of motivation. I'll give you two examples. Make it satisfying is law number four. So see progress. So if somebody works out for a week, they might not see any progress if they don't have clarity. How do I game the system? You get a calendar, get a habit tracker. Every time you work out, put an X. Now you can see progress day one. Week one, I only got three X's. Week two, four X's. That's your progress. Make it satisfying, game the system. If you have a lack of motivation, my argument is you have a lack of clarity. The number, second thing, I, this actually, I stole this from a salesperson. So if you guys don't know, I just don't coach. I make like 40, 50 calls a week. People just don't magically show up here. Um, and sometimes I'll get on a call, first two calls, it's awesome. I get new, we get new people in here. You probably, I've spoken to a few of them on the phone. And there's sometimes where like, I'm 30 calls in, I'm like, I can't get anybody on the phone. I got this from this person. So what I do, I actually do this. I get paper clips, each call I make, I put it in here and I could see the progress, right? So if you don't see progress, it's because you don't have clarity or system. So I use this and now at the end of the week, it fills up. I have a little bit taller one. So make it satisfying. What are other ways you can see progress? Okay. And we got about four minutes left here. So if you want to break a habit, we inverse the laws. We inverse the laws. If you want to break a habit, Write this down, it's on the second page, sorry. Let's flip the page. Cool, cool. Law number one, inverse, make it invisible. Please write that down, make it invisible. Environmental design, it's hard. So if you wanna stop eating those cookies, hey, how about you put them in the garage or in a cabinet out of sight? So when you come home from a long day at work and you're out of willpower and you're just grumpy, I got to go in the garage to get that. Ah, screw it here. Make it invisible. Increase the friction. Environmental design is super important. You are a product of your environment. Law number two, inverse, make it unattractive. When you could do education, say for example, uh, a certain health issue runs in your family and you're a little bit worried that it's going to touch you too as well. If you can do some education and say, if I eat this way, I'm next in line in the family, right? And so use that reframing, you know, do some education, bring the consequences from the future to the present, okay? So use that reframe. Uh, law number three, oh, I, I, this is what I've been doing lately. Uh, make it difficult, increase friction. Uh, you're watching too much TV? Okay, when you're done with TV, take out the battery, give it to somebody, and you can watch as much TV as you want, but you have to tell the person what show you're going to watch so you don't mindlessly just go on the TV. Game the system. This is what I've been doing lately. So I'm on social media a lot, mostly for business. 
okay? And sometimes uh, before bed, I'll kind of just, I'll read, I always read, but then I'll go on like social media. Now, I, I want to break this habit. So what I did, I increased the friction. I basically went from one step, then I put the social media, that's a lot of text. Um, I put it in these other windows, and before what was one step, I gotta open this and I gotta flip it four times. I increase the friction. So when I'm like half asleep, I'm like four steps, whatever. So increase the friction. If you're, at, if you're talking about motivation, I think it's from a lack of systems and a lack of clarity. So use that. Change one step to four steps. Final law, last few here. In version four, make it unsatisfying. Accountability partners work like things where people meet up and work. I'll, I'll give an example. I have three coaches. I've had coaches for over a decade. I, I don't rely on myself. And when you tell somebody like my coach, Asa, she's like the female version of me. She, we're very blunt with each other and stuff. Uh, and she holds my feet to the fire and we do goal setting and we have to meet every, we get to meet every month and it's going to be unsatisfying if I look her in the eye and she, and I didn't follow through. Okay. Another thing you could do is contracts. Some of the things I've done with my friends, I'll say, you know, I need to do this project. Here's 20 bucks. Uh, every time I give you an update, I get five bucks back. Or if I don't do this, I have to pay you five bucks. And if you don't want to use money, use some other currency some other currency. Again, if you're talking about a lack of motivation, my, my contention is it's because you have a lack of systems. Because remember the one thing I told you that I hope you remember? It's not a lack of motivation. It's a lack of systems. You rise and fall to the level of your systems. And then here's the final two things here. Some of you are going to go home and you're like, oh, that was all right. That was great. You know, I had an aha moment. Some of you are going to go home and you're going to put this stuff away. Some of you are going to take action. I hope when you come to that critical road that you think of this last final two slides and this story. So Jerry Olsman, he's a professor in Florida, and he divided his photography class into two sections. One section, he said, I'm going to grade you guys on the quantity, the amount of pictures you take. You guys, I'm going to grade you on the quality of pictures, and you can even turn in one, okay? Right, so how many you take, quantity, quality. At the end of the semester, everybody turned in their stuff, and he found that not a single freaking good picture came from this group. All the great pictures came from this group. And this concept is called motion versus action. This group was so in their head thinking about the perfect picture to take, they didn't hone their skills. And they were doing things that they thought were making them better motion. They're thinking and using RAM, but they're not getting anywhere. This group just kept taking pictures and honing their skills. After 10 pictures, ah, better. And they had the better pictures. So when you go home and you're thinking about, you know, I'm thinking about it. I want you to think back about this. It wasn't the people who thought about it or the perfect picture. It was the people that actually took pictures and honed their skills. Okay. So hopefully when you get home, you take pictures and hone your skills. Okay. So that is my speech. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. We got maybe like a minute of questions and Dr. Thomas is up next.